Hey guys, John V here with Phone Arena. This is our first look comparison between the LG G7 Thin Q and the LG G6. While the G6 last year introduced us to a more modern looking design with its glass meets metal construction, the G7 Thin Q is a remarkably more refined looking smartphone in every facet. And when you put the two side by side to one another, there's more of an elegant look with the G7 Thin Q because of its rounded edges, which makes it feel better in the hand versus the flatter edges of the G6. It's a stark comparison because LG has tweaked and retooled the design of the G7 Thin Q to make it the more attractive one. We are a little bit bummed that the power button is no longer integrated with the rear mounted fingerprint sensor with the G7 Thin Q. It now has its own position on the right side of the phone, but they still both offer some conveniences like the 3.5mm headphone jack and they also have the same IP68 rating for water resistance. Over on the spec side, the G7 Thin Q packs a 6.1 inch Quad HD Plus full vision display that's 1440 by 3160 pixels, while the G6 has a smaller 5.7 inch full vision IPS display at 1440 by 2880 pixels. It's really amazing how LG is able to pack a larger and high resolution display into the G7 Thin Q without adding a whole lot of length to the handset. In fact, our eyes are a little bit more fixed to the G7 Thin Q's display, primarily because it has skinnier bezels all around. Speaking of those bezels, there's only one minor distraction with the G7 Thin Q, and that's the notch near its earpiece. It might be a slight distraction, but luckily there's a way to actually mask it in the display settings. On top of that, it should be noted that G7 Thin Q is capable of reaching a maximum output of 1000 nits under direct sunlight, which should make it more visible than the G6. So on the surface, the two might appear to have very similar looking user interfaces, but once you start to inspect some of the details, you'll find that the G7 Thin Q has more features with its arsenal. Yes, the basic functions of Android are all available with both handsets, but with the G7 Thin Q, you're going to have some new AI integrated features that you're going to find in the camera, some of the voice integration stuff and home appliances. And you're also going to find other features like the floating bar to access certain apps and also facial recognition as another form of security. When it comes to processing power, the G7 Thin Q definitely has an advantage being the newer phone packing the Snapdragon 845 chip with 4GB of RAM, that's a significant hardware upgrade versus the Snapdragon 821 chip that's powering the G6. While with basic things, you might not notice a whole lot of difference between the two, but when it comes to benchmark testing, some gaming aspects, the G7 ThinQ is going to absolutely do better in those areas. LG has taken everything it's done with the G6's dual cameras and is taking it to new heights here with the G7 Thin Q because now with its dual camera system, it's going to be able to take portrait shots both with the rear and front facing cameras, something we couldn't do with the G6. And on top of that, it also packages in a ton of video centric features. So you're going to get some manual video controls and some cine effects to make it a really great smartphone for content creators. We will say though that the secondary wide angle camera in the LG G6 is still wider at 125 degrees versus the newer wide angle camera in the G7 Thin Q which tops out at only 107 degrees. So you're not going to capture as much of the scene but it's still going to be good enough. It's kind of strange to know that the G6 has the larger battery between the two. It's a 3300 milliamp hour one versus only the 3000 milliamp hour battery in the G7 Thin Q. Yes, that's an advantage for the G6, but we don't know how the G7 Thin Q will perform, and both phones still offer the convenience of wireless charging. Many people applauded LG's efforts with the G6 for going back to the basics and focusing on the core features of a smartphone. Even with all the acclaim, the phone wasn't necessarily perceived by the masses as a top contender because it merely brought on features that its contemporaries already delivered. With this year's successor though, it's a dramatic change as the G7 Thin Q is a refined smartphone in nearly every facet. The last piece missing in this puzzle is the G7 Thin Q's pricing. We know it's going to be more than its predecessor, but the question is by how much more? Nevertheless, the higher price point certainly has its merits as the G7 Thin Q offers a wealth of newer features, a more stylish design, and extensive controls with its upgraded camera hardware. And that is it for this video guys. If you want to learn more about either smartphone, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John B, signing off.